This is browser use. And the way that it works is we ask an agent to perform a task. And as an example, over here, the task is find me the best kid-friendly top five activities to do in Los Angeles next weekend. We also ask it to keep the budget under $20. And we can see here that uh, the agent is using the browser. It's creating the search term. And we can also see over here in the command prompt window exactly how it's working. So we can see that it goes on the internet. It looks at all of the different activities. And then based on that, it's also calculating the cost for each one of those activities. And then finally, at the end, it's going to give us the top five recommendations. So here we can see it's do its thing. It's going to all of these different websites like TripAdvisor and uh, World of Illusions. And here it's also looking at all of these different things, trying to keep it under that price range. I'm also seeing it work live and go to all of these different browsers. So first it went um, to this browser, then it created or it went to this page. It knows when to cancel out of different pop-ups. Um, so it's pretty incredible so far. And there we go. It says tasks completed successfully. And based on that, it gave us the top five things that we can do. So in this video, I'll show you how you can set this up from scratch. The only assumption is that you have Python and Git installed in your computer. And if you don't, not a big deal. Just watch the video that I've linked in the description below and then come back to this one. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing that I'm going to do is go to the web UI GitHub repository. Now here I'm going to scroll down and you can see here that we have two ways in which we can install this. We have a local installation and a Docker installation. So in this video, I'm going to be doing the local version, but I'll also create another video on how you can set this up with Docker and I'll link it in the description. For now, let's just copy this command that says git clone, because no matter what, you'll still have to clone the repository. Now I'm going to go to my file explorer and over here, let me just open up a random folder. So this is the documents folder. Now over here, I'm going to select open in terminal. And then I'm going to paste the command that says git clone browser use web UI. So when I run this, you can see here that it created this folder for web UI, which is perfect. Now over here, I'm going to go back into this folder and then again, open this in terminal. Now let's take a look at what the installation requires. It says first we need to, or first we recommend using UV to set up the Python environment. So let's click on this, open up UV. Now all UV is, is a Python package manager. So if you scroll down, we have two ways in which we can install this either on a Mac or a windows. Since I'm on a windows, I'm going to copy this. But if you're on a Mac, you'll just copy this command. Now I'm going to open up PowerShell and I'm going to simply paste the command that I just copied and then I'll select or hit enter. So now we would be starting to download um, the UV package manager. Now, since that's done, I'm going to activate the package manager. So the way that it recommends us to do is first running this. So let's copy this command. So first I'm going to paste the UV virtual environment Python 3.11 command. And this is going to create a virtual environment that's currently running Python 3.11. And now that it's done, it says it's activate or we can activate it like this. So let's just go over here and copy this command as well. I'm going to go back to command prompt and then paste that code. Now over here, it says uh, source is not recognized. And that's because uh, this I'm currently on a Windows machine. So all I would need to do is just copy this command and then paste it. And over here, we can see that it has activated web UI. So that's great. Next step, it says install the dependencies. So let's copy this command, go back over here and then paste which for some reason I was not able to copy. So let's copy this again and paste. There we go. So now it's going to install all the dependencies that web UI needs. Okay. So it looks like all the requirements have been installed. And then it says, then we need to install playwright. So again, copy that command, paste it here, and then it should work fine. Now let's scroll down to where it says usage. Now over here, it says copy the dot env example to end file and set your environment variables. Uh, we'll leave this for now. And I'm simply going to run this command. So run web UI. So let's go over here and then paste this command. Now, once this is done, we can see that it's running on local URL one two seven zero zero one. So if I hit control and click on this, it's going to open it up in my browser. So which is great. 
So this is what I like to see. Now over here, I can go to my LLM configuration. And you can see here that I can either select Anthropic, OpenAI, or DeepSeek. Now for DeepSeek, I can select the DeepSeek chat model, which is the DeepSeek V3, or the newest version of DeepSeek, which is DeepSeek R1. And you can see here that we have the DeepSeek Reasoner model available. Now, the thing that I'll need is the DeepSeek API key and the base URL. So let's go ahead and get that. So let's go search for DeepSeek. And here I'm going to select this one. And it says get DeepSeek app. I don't need the app. I just need to click on the API platform. And then over here, I just need to sign in. Now, once you sign in, you'll be able to see this page right here. Now, all you will do is just top up with some balance, whether it's $2 or $5. I'm just going to keep it standard. Just keep it $5 for now. Now, here, once you top up with some balance, you'll then go to your API keys section. Now, over here, you will create a new API key. And let's call this key test or web UI. I'm going to create this API key, and then I'm going to copy this. Now that I've copied the key, I can simply paste that key over here. And what I'll also need is the base URL, which is going to be api.deepseek.com forward slash v1. Now I can go to agent settings. And what I need to do is make sure that I'm not enabling vision capabilities because it runs into some problems with DeepSeek. Everything else can pretty much remain the same. Let's go to run agent. And the task here, it's a default task. It says go to google.com and type open AI and then click search. So let's run this agent. And here we can see in the command prompt window whether or not it's actually going to work. So first it did go to google.com. And then based on that, now it's going to go to the next part or step number two. And here we can see that it typed in open AI. And based on that, it's now going to step three. So we can see here that input open AI into the search bar, click the Google search button, and then extract the first URL from the search results. So this is currently what it worked on. And then based on that, it was able to go to this site right here. So step three did get done completing. Um, and over here, we can see that it also looked at all of those different things. So the search input trigger suggestions, and uh, we can see that it's trying to extract the URL. And there we go. Finally, it got done, and this is the result. It said first URL from the source result is openai.com. Task completed successfully. So now let's give it a slightly more advanced task. And the task that I'm going to ask it is to find me the cheapest hotels to stay in New York between 127 and 128. So these are the dates that I provided. And I also specified that I want to stay as close to Times Square as possible. So let's see how it's going to be able to search this. So the first thing that it did was it searched for cheapest hotels near Times Square, New York, and also uh, clicked or selected or typed in check-in and it gave the check-in dates. Now we can see that it then went to kayak.com and here I'm just going to allow all of the uh, functionalities and we can see here that it's actually searching the dates. Now it was really interesting how it was also able to see over here that it's in the incorrect grid and it needed to go in the January grid. Now, something else that I also want you to see here is the fact that it showed that Kayak shows hotels near Times Square for from $104 per night. And Expedia lists 10,000 hotels near Times Square from $131. And that's why it went to Kayak. So here we can see that the agent is done. It said that uh, there were three hotels, one for $82 per night, $83 per night, and a Hilton for $167 per night that was 0.0, .0 miles away.